Yeah, right. And that was my big thing. I'm like, oh, I've been doing so much volume. Yes, volume works. And that's why we were successful is because I learned how to do volume. Like, I didn't really care about quality. I knew how to do volume. All right. You do enough volume. Guess what? You make enough in return. It yes. Works. Now it's about, right, how to cut down and still keep your quality of leads, quality of, right, contracts coming in. Yes, much less leads, but you're having higher conversion rates, something, right? It's easy to tell when a couple of weeks ago, dude, I was getting 200 leads a week from marketing. Hello, you're listening to Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast, presented by Brandon Elliott. This show will be going over all aspects of real estate investing and is intended to educate, motivate, and prepare you to take action on your first or next real estate investment. For more information, please visit BrandonElliottInvestments.com. Thank you for listening and enjoy. Welcome back, everyone, to Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Brandon Elliott. I am excited today. We have a buddy from mine that we met months ago in another mastermind group that we're a part of for, for real estate. And a majority of the people in this mastermind, it's all about systemizing your real estate business and really turning it, stop being the hustler, right? And actually get the KPIs, get the systems in place. And these guys blew me away. Like By all means, I should have had them on the moment when I met them. But actually seeing them a second time just uh, about a couple of weeks ago in Chicago at our last mastermind get together, it was amazing to have Chris and Frank, his partner, which isn't with us today, but we will catch him on the next one for sure. It is just unbelievable to see the results and the systems that they have in place. And they're actually starting to give back now and help out more people doing the same exact thing. They've been in the game for just a year and a half. But check this out. They're doing six figures in wholesaling per month. And they got the systems in place. They have the KPIs. They know what's dialed in over in Oklahoma, based out of... And like I said, just a year and a half in and just crushing it right from the start. So really, really excited to have Chris on. What's up, man? How are you today, brother? Yo, what's going on, bro? Appreciate you having me on, man. It's always love talking about what we do, man. And I'm happy to share with anybody here who's listening, right? You guys have any questions and we're happy to tell you how we did it. But man, I'm excited to be here and see how we can help people. Yeah, dude. I appreciate it, man. So talk to me. Why real estate for you? Uh, you know, What were you doing prior and partnership? How did that come to fruition? Yeah, absolutely, man. So I don't know. This whole intuition thing started fucking like five years ago. I was in the Navy for six years. I got hurt. I was talking to my brother, Frank. He tells me one fucking crazy day. He's like, dude, you need to go read this book, Thinking Girl Rich. And I was like, yeah. okay, dude, I read it. And like something, something pinged in his mind. And I'm like, okay, cool. I ended up getting hurt and I had a month off for surgery. I binge watched or I binge listened to that audio book. And man, it was life changing, right? One of my best books that I love to always share with people is just Thinking Grow Rich. That was mine personally. I love it. That's why I love to reckon. There's many good ones, but something in that book, man, clicked, right? And I agree. There's something magical about that one. It's just something special. It, it unlocks it for so many real estate investors. It's crazy. Dude, I, I don't know what it was, right? Unlocked it. Fast forward two and a half years, I think, two years or three years. Over those two years, I didn't take any action, right? But I never let my flame die. Like I always fucking, I'm going to do something. I listened to bigger pockets fucking books years ago, never did anything with them. New Year's, it was New Year's 2019. I'm sitting, sitting down with my wife and turn I'm like, I'm gonna do real estate this year. Like actually fucking, I'm gonna sit down and get out. Cause I'll, I knew that I was gonna get out the military that year. Yeah. And I was like, I want to set myself up to do something. I was like, I've always looked into real estate. I know, I knew something simple. People made money in real estate. And I was like, okay, cool. Well, let me go figure that out. Right. I know money is there. I don't know. I didn't know anything about it. So I dug into real estate. Man, I hated working. I'll be honest, doing working for the government for six years. I learned what I did not like. Yeah. I, I like having my freedom. I like doing things certain ways. I wanted to be free. I could have got out and got a really good job. I was in the cybersecurity field, so could have done something great with that, but just didn't want to. 
I started early. So that same year or January, I got into real estate. I reached out to my first partner. That was actually the one that helped me start this. I was learning how to do real estate. I reached out to my local partner that was there, Mike. He came in and he fucking, he showed me a little bit of what wholesaling is like, dude, this is what wholesaling is, right? Real estate told me to go read a book. If you can't wholesale after this, I got nothing for you. Leave that's yeah. Give you the basic of what wholesaling was. And I was like, okay, cool, right? I read it for the month of January. I reached back out to him in February. And I was like, hey, I read the book. Now what? Like, <laughs> how do you find leads? Where do you know how to find people to talk to? I was like, how does that work? Like, where do I even start? I don't know. You just go driving around, right? You go driving for dollars. He right gave me the direction. I was like, okay, cool. So I started doing all this, right? I started trying to call. Nothing came of it. Fast forward again, I end up working with him. He's like, dude, because I went back to him and said, dude, is there a way I can just help you? Like, do you need, it was during COVID and we had a lot of free time and I didn't sure. work much because of the military, I got to stay home and I was like, yo, I want to learn. I have literally time. Like I'm going to trade my time for knowledge right now. Right. Other words, yeah. I was free work. Like, yeah. what do you think you do? And I'll do free work. Dude, he starts handing me, he's like, I have this one deal. That it's fuck. It was like an hour away from us, and I was like, I'll, "I'll try to sell it for you. Why not?" Right? It was a deal they couldn't move. They give it to me. At this time, I already had my business card that I had made. I went out and I go meet with my first investor ever. I hit him up and I was like, "All right, are you going to meet me there?" Oh no, you're good, man. You'll figure it out. I'm like, "Okay, cool." I've always done sales my whole life. You're only like teenagers. I used to flip cars. Like one funny story: the way I got my first car, I traded a dog all the way up to a car. That's how I learned how to. That's why I bought my first company. Right? You traded a dog up oh, to a car, and then you kept selling up to a car. Yeah, I love it. Car. Right, so I, dude, I came back. Frank and I come from a history, man, of years of just learning how to just hustle. Right, we yeah, cars, Flip. flips, like you name it, did we fucking did anything that made us money? We're like, okay, right. So I went to this first investor. It wasn't new to me. Like I was just, I made it work. Right, talk like you know it. Hey, I don't sell it to him. That's fine. I ended up selling the house two days later to a different family, right? Sold my first deal. My partner at the time was like, dude, we couldn't move this house. How the fuck do you sell it? And I was like, well, oh, the way I know how to sell, like how I always sold everything else to Facebook, all night, right? Right? Yeah. Like just what was common to me. I like, sold it. Cool. He gives me another shitty house a couple of weeks later, completely fucking trashed as well. I was like, dude, this is a piece of shit. It's not going to sell. I'll end up fucking selling it in a week as well. And I was like, I surprised myself. I was like, okay, cool, right? I kind of learned. I was learning. That's all I wanted. I wanted to learn. Well, fast forward March, three months in, that first investor that I met with at that first property gave me a call for my business card. And remember, I told I, he said that I buy properties in Oklahoma City. Tells me he has a duplex, right? Dude, again, this was like, I think a Saturday morning, either on my birthday or right after my birthday, my family was in town. I wake up and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Well, how many, right? Not knowing what the fuck I'm doing, man. Like talking out my ass, right? Yeah. I made it sound like, and I know I was like, yeah, absolutely. Take all the information. We go walk it. Deal ends up being that it's a deal. We can do something with it. Not only is it deal, it was a deal that brought me $35,000. Yeah. First deal, right? I split that with my mentor because that was my thing. I told him, dude, if you teach me how to do anything, we do it together. I don't, I give you my half. Like, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. Right. I just wanted to learn. Just teach me. Teach me how to fish. Let's go. Good. Taught me, dude. I, we split that. Right. I have like a nice $16,000, $17,000 check. I've never seen that type of money, nor have I received a check at one time. I was like, right. That instantly was like, welcome to real estate. I was like, yeah. Okay, cool. I like this, right? I can do this. Like, this is fucking dope. You told me I didn't have to work nearly as hard than I have ever worked in my life. And I just made, I was like, sign me up, right? This is what yeah. I want to do. So from that time on, dude, I was like full, full fucking game. I was sold. I was like, I'm going to get out of the military and do this full time. So I continue growing to do while in the military. We keep working together. I signed up. Those 16K, as fast as I got them, Brandon, I wasted them. Yeah. Turned around and I did something that I never thought I would do, that I used to call a scam. Signed up for a fucking guru program, Steve Train, right? More specifically, I had talked to like three people prior to that. I already had it in my mind, right? I think I had talked to Jamil from yeah. Astro Flipping. I don't know. I just didn't like, right? Like, dude, I don't know. They all sounded scams to me. What a reason, dude. Fucking Steve sells me. He gets me fucking close, dude. Was the most expensive one as well, 15K. That little, the money I made, dude. 
I was like, here you go, Steve. Right. I don't know. Something told me, dude, I, one of the decisions I did either, I took the big decision that day and I didn't talk to anybody. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell my wife. I didn't. Yeah. Cause I had told her, I was like, Hey, this money is not, don't, that's not our money. I was like, that was going to be meant to be invested. And that's why I, I treated it, dude. I committed or I told everybody, right? And you get that. You spent how much? On yeah. It? When you can see the vision, but others can't, they're always going to talk you out of it. They're always going to yeah. try to bring fear into it. And then they're going to start freaking out for you. And then you start panicking and start having second you guessing. Run, buyers from do it. Dude, so that's why I didn't talk to anybody, Brandon. Yeah. I was like, no. Why? Because that's, I knew exactly what was going to happen. I was going to go talk to right? my brother, my wife, my dad. Yeah. You did. I said, fuck it. I pulled it, dude. Best 15K I've ever fucking invested because from there, I love it, dude. So proud I, of you, bro. I'm so proud of you. So many people don't invest in themselves, and that's why. And it's because they let fear overcome them or yeah. what their, you know, parents say or family members, significant other. And it's like that will hold you back. So Absolutely, man. It, it's crazy. What what did you make on that investment? I mean, it was, it was basically everything, right? That like really put the nuts and bolts in place to a certain degree, like, right? I look back a year, man, what has been built up, that's what has been, you can't put an ROI on that. Like yeah. you can't write the knowledge. And it was one of my powers, man, that I didn't know. I used to think I was dumb. I was a high school dropout. This yep. was right. Barely got into the military, like fucking barely passed my ass. Dude, I wasn't the brightest. I'm not a fucking book smart. My partner allowed me to learn that from myself when he's like, dude, I don't know, go do this. And like, right, the things I did work. And I was like, holy shit. So I learned I had this power, dude. And also, I take action. I take massive action. Like, I'm, I love it. If you know me for a good time, dude, my superpower is you tell me something, I'm going to go do it by the end of the week. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to do it right there and then. But so I get into this mastermind, right? I talk to Steve Train. Hey, Steve, I mean, what are you doing? I quickly realized, dude, I was very upset about four days into the mastermind. I almost wanted to call him and cancel it because I get there, dude, and I go look at his library thinking he was going to have, right, like coaching courses and like step by step. His videos were just his recorded loom videos. And I was like, dude, I've been fucking Jude. I was like, dude, I've been, how can I have not? Oh, like I just paid 15K for this. And I was like, fuck it. I'll roll with it though, right? I yeah. Like, talk to him. Dude, he reassured me. I was yeah. like, I know it's not, it's like just the value. I was like, all right, that's fine, right? Well, I started talking to people. I'm like, well, Steve, who do you use to co-call? Well, I use call tools. Okay, cool. That's who I'm using. Who do you use for data? I use Investor Machine. Okay, cool. That's who I'm using. <laughs> Investor Machine is not cheap. That's a $10,000 yeah. startup fee with a minimum ad spend of four grand a month, right? I was like, fuck it. Steve says this makes some money. Make some money, right? Yeah, yeah, let's go. No, I keep it simple. Okay, cool. Hey, where'd you find your VAs? Oh, I use this company. There was a person in his mastermind that used to hire VAs. His name is Chandler. They have a wholesaling business out in Georgia. He's my mentor. He's one of the biggest reasons why I've got where I was too. So I quickly realized, I was like, I started talking to him. He helped me find my first VA. He kind of walked me through how to right set it up on call tools, like how to train them. I asked him, I was like, dude, I like what you do. Can you mentor me? He's like, well, I've never had any. He's like, we've thought about it. He's like, we've never had anybody do it yet. I was like, dude, I'm cool with it, man. I'm like, I want to learn. He tells me, yes, best fucking money, start investing, right? These, they're kids, dude, they're young. I'm young too, but there were like 22, 23 at the time doing 2 million a year. They're looking to do 6 million this year. Fucking crushing it in Georgia, dude. Fucking crushing it. Well, I linked up with the perfect person, man, because he started to coach me from up here and not from down here. It took me a good while, but man, that when I say pay for skills, guys, like seriously, if you want to be up here, go learn what these guys are doing. Don't learn yeah. that the guys that are learning down here because they're still learning, right? Learn at the ones that are doing fucking high level. They're the ones yeah. that teach you. So that that's the thing. It's like now that you've learned from it and you're very successful with it, you're pulling in six figures a, a month from it. Now you're to the point that you can actually show other people like, hey, this is the software you need. This is exactly its tools. This is the scripts. This is like the know-how. If you're having this problem with your KPIs, this is what you need to adjust or stay focused on. And I saw it when we were in the mastermind together, when you were helping out certain people, I was like, you know, this guy, it sounded like you're in the game for like 10 plus years, you know, <laughs> but it's like you get it and you got the mentorship to know exactly what to go for. So 
you started off at a way higher level and that's what masterminds, that's what investing in yourself looks like at the end of the day. Absolutely. Right, dude. If it wasn't, he taught me, right. Again, dude, I was so lost because he was teaching me at his high level stuff, dude. I, I didn't make like, I tried to make sense. He used to just tell me KPIs, 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 dude. Yeah. I don't know why. From the very, even with Steve Train, I heard fucking KPIs, dude. And it was like a, this is my only mission for my career. I need to learn and track my KPIs, not knowing what they were either, right? I just, sure. was, oh man, I needed to. I was like, sure, I'll find out. Oh, dude, that's where we became data junkies, right? We started collect, we started learning how to collect KPIs. Then we started learning what KPIs do. Then how you can run a business according to KPIs. How like literally your whole business can be ran from a couple numbers and some theories, right? Well, in theory, if you do X, Y, and Z, right? You should have this output. Yeah. Fuck it. Let's try that. All right. Let's go figure out. So, man, we started Steve Trang, I think, like in June. I signed up with him, started learning. I signed up for Investor Machine. Like I said, we paid 10 grand, right? Yep. I also had my partner at the time. Man, he believed in my vision. That was another thing. I never had anybody believe in me. Believed in my vision, dude. He was like, dude, I'm willing to fucking invest and help you buy this data. I was like, okay, right. I spend my money. He bring in his. We buy investor machine, dude. We get our first co caller. I don't know what the fuck we're doing, but dude, I'm finding it out, right? I'm yeah. just up our dialers, dude, our podios. The way they were, they were they worked. That's that's how I even say they worked. Because two weeks in, what would you know, Brandon? I got a fucking six deal package. Six that, deals. Let's go. It was one seller that had six yep. different companies, dude. That right, dude. I had maybe about a month. We had about a month in operating expenses, right? Like, hey, this has to work. Holy shit, dude. You want to have like that? <laughs> what the hell just happened? Like, yeah. Right. Two weeks in, dude, we get this package, ends up making us 40K that month. And then another 40K. Then I think October we dropped down. We didn't do anything, but it just started like comp. Like now we have enough to fucking keep working. Okay, let me go invest in this. I would buy, God, I can't tell you how much money I have spent in data software a lot. Like yeah. a lot, right? A lot of money gets spent into software. Yeah, you know, I start buying all these softwares, right? As fast as I would make money, man, I kept investing like i love it investing wasn't properties it was my business right yeah softwares tools courses fucking coaches like right where i can this masterminds i was like yep. my investing right doesn't have to just be necessarily right you have to buy a property no invest like you said invest in yourself man most importantly invest in yourself so you can have the opportunity to keep investing yeah I, I think a lot of people sleep on that with not just investing in yourself, but also identifying like reinvest in your business, especially for your first five plus years. It's like, that's when all the businesses fail, you know? Yep. So it's like, get risky, but also get calculated risk and take that money that you're making and put it back into the software, the technology, the overall just structure of the foundation that you're trying to build upon and yourself, you are the catalyst of this. So it's like, Make sure you're sharper than ever and you're learning yep. from the best of the best. So That's talk it. to me, what kind of numbers have you guys produced at this point since that six deal package to now roughly? Man, so I know for the year... You're, you're the KPIs guy. So it's like, you're good. Yeah. You have it You have it on a sheet right now. <laughs> like for the year, I know we. Had, I just looked into it, it was 675 things what it was and we did... Probably like 120, I think, or 200 the first like six months. So the so last say, year, you guys did roughly around 200,000. Like 200, yeah, I think it was like 200 gross is what we did last year within those five months, right? Of just fucking yeah, starting learning off. and investing in yourself. Like, and like, like, we've done six months. So we're, yeah, you know, I would say we're at like 800,000 right now since we started a year and a half. A little short under my goal. I really expected to be at a million. Well, it's been a dip the last couple of months too, you know. Yes, so I, I wasn't. I was, dude, I'm new. I'm yeah. brand new. Like yeah. that's right. That's what happens when you're new. I was like, the wholesaling's fucking great. It's amazing. It's yeah. easy. It's fucking. I'm literally throwing money and money's coming back in bags, right? And I was like, dude, this is beauty. And then, dude, that hits. Yeah. Holy fuck, man! Like, so, so let's talk because I want to hear your opinion on the market, what it's done for you guys, and and then your neck of the woods. But I also want to talk about the KPIs and, and drop it down yeah, so that totally. any listeners, if they're first getting started, or maybe they're a veteran but they just don't have their KPIs, right? Well, yeah. I want to go over that. But talk to me first about 
What has it looked like in your market the last few months? Man, these few months, what we were just seeing for a good example, right in July, when this whole thing started to fall, we had to close, cancel, I think nine contracts, eight or nine contracts. Before that time happened, we were at a 98% closing rate. Insane. So we shouldn't have been that 98. Wow. We were, we were able to sell just about everything that that means you're you're not having to go back and reconsider or like whatever it is it's like if you lock it up in contract you are selling that bad boy 98 percent is unheard of that's great good for you guys six months dude was i think we had canceled one right our mentors were like dude i don't know what you're doing like they told us that it was wrong he was like you shouldn't be that high that means you're not being risky enough go be more risky right go take more chances i'm like yeah i love that right but yeah, we're at ninety eight percent, man. First six year or first like six to seven months, right? It was great. It was yeah. booming. It was easy. Anything you sent out, dude, that fucking responded. These last couple months have been rough. We're our average dispo fee used to be twenty k per deal. We're at like a seven thousand right now for the last ninety days. Not just that, we had dropped down from doing six closed deals a month. We were getting an average of like ten to eleven signed a month. Dude, we're struggling to close one a month right now. Like it's just yeah. that three months took such a hard hit because the biggest problem we were having, the market's still hot. No, it's not. Like yeah, you seen the news? Like yeah, it's not hot, there, right? there's so much fear right now. The interest rates going up, which means some people are getting kicked out that were just on the edge, and then yeah. others are just so fearful because of stock market dipping several times crypto crashing and so many other things that the recession that we are in now. So everybody, even if they're looking for properties, they're not pulling the trigger because they think that there's going to be some huge price reduction coming up in the next month or two. And it's just, I don't think it's going to be like that. I think it's going to be drawn out more, but inventory is stacking up. So there will be more opportunities for the desperate, very motivated sellers that have to sell, right? But you know what? You guys are still turning a profit. Every dollar you're putting out, you're still turning. And that's what it's about. So just because we had some crazy numbers in the past, you guys got to ride that wave. Kudos to you for not giving up and and still pushing forward. Real estate can be so... It's like a little roller coaster at some points, but it's definitely amazing what you guys have produced thus far. Talk to me about the KPIs. If somebody is listening for the very first time, like what kind of KPI should they be aware of in the wholesaling space? So, man, I would say it really just depends on where you're at in your business, right? So let's say you're new, you have one co-caller and you have your CRM. So you have your, what we call our manufacturing line, right? Your base KPI, these are the most important to the company. Yeah. You're going to be looking for your leads generated, appointment set, offers made, contract signed, right? In the simplest way, you have four KPIs you're tracking. Now we break down ours, right? Again, way more specific to our company, but those are your big ones. If you know you're generating enough leads, then you know you can produce appointments. If you're producing enough appointments, you should be producing contracts, right? And if you aren't producing enough of those, then you're not going to produce contracts, right? So I would say starting off, learn your marketing. Seriously, I grew my marketing very, very, very quickly, right? I threw on five cold callers, texters, multiple texting accounts, PPC, direct mail. I love the opportunity that I had to learn. Take it easy. I'm $15,000 down in PPC, barely broke even with direct mail. Texting and cold calling, which I handled in-house, fucking crushed it. And I was like... Seriously, niche yourself in something first and grow, right? There's people doing six figures, man, off this cold calling. So talk to me about the cold calling, you know, like, or I'm sorry, did you say PPC is what you're doing? So we do cold calling and texting now. We used to do PPC and direct now. For the text blast though, you guys are getting great results, right? Yeah. We were getting a 15x return on it last quarter or the quarter before. 15x return on text blast. So talk to me about that. Is there anything that people need to be mindful of, especially when it comes down to not disturb list? Because I've heard some horror stories of people getting sued or, Mm -hmm. you know, from being bothered with calling. Man, so there's 
I guess the simplest thing you guys should be doing is if you guys are doing any type of cold marketing, don't use your real company name, right? Make up yeah. a market name. Like, I hope you guys don't think you need a real LLC to do that. Like, man, you're marketing, right? You know, you're playing a risky game. So use a, use a marketing name, right? Don't yep. use your LLC. Train your team. We spend a lot of time training on litigators, right? We do litigator training. How to identify a litigator? What are litigators asking? What right? What are what can happen? So we we sit down all the time, right? We try to train with them maybe once a quarter. We'll refresh, or when we hear an incident, right? If possible, all right, cool. Now it's a good time to go touch up on litigator. What do they sound like? What are they looking for? What kind of questions are we do? They're sounding pushy, right? Like train your team to help with that. Same for something that I just learned now. I was also not big into data management in the sense that I didn't refine my data a lot. I just had bulk and I just sent bulk. Yeah. Something I literally just been building out this weekend. If you guys are new and you guys have a lot of data, learn to manage your data. You, your platform tells you wrong numbers, right? D and C's. Export all that information and update it in your master data so you're not marketing to D and C's two litigators, two wrong numbers, right? Specify that list. So if you have right a list of 40,000 people and each one have five numbers, so you have, I don't know, let's just say 100,000 numbers. Man, make sure you're staying up to date with those numbers. Remove them, tag them. Like That is going to produce quality. Refine your list. You're not looking for a needle in a fucking haystack anymore, right? You can hopefully look for a needle in a pin box. I don't know. Sure. Like, yeah. I mean, you're only as good as your data that you have. So really, the more time and energy that you put into that to really refine it and make sure that you're pulling out all the crap in it, then yeah, you can... Obviously, you're dealing with better odds. Better. I mean, and that goes back to KPIs, right? The only reason we even know this is because yeah, KPIs tell a story, right? You go dig into it. Hey, our texting has slowed down significantly. We increased hoping to double what we had made and we actually slowed down. We're like, okay, what the fuck happened, right? Why didn't our returns come as we hoped to be? Well, some of our conversions are off. The way we were texting was not right. So again, a whole, man, you know, if you guys don't know, you're always rebuilding your systems. It never yeah. stops. So just do it right now. Like it's not, you're always refining and rebuilding. Yeah. Man, right? And that was my big thing. I'm like, cool, I've been doing so much volume. Yes, volume works. And that's why we were successful is because I learned how to do volume. Like, I didn't really care about quality. I knew how to do volume. All right? You do enough volume, guess what? You make enough fucking return. It works. Yeah. Now it's about, right, how to cut down and still keep your quality of leads, quality of, right, contracts coming in. Yes, much less leads, but you're having higher conversion rates, something, right? It's easy to tell when a couple of weeks ago, dude, I was getting 200 leads a week for marketing. I'm getting about a hundred leads a week now, less appointments. Yeah. But guess what, man? Our conversions from contract sign are going up. Nice. Makes sense, right? Because we are implementing quality control, like yes. asking for more quality. So yeah, you stop the volume and then your quality goes up. But right. Be able to track that, like know the changes you're going to make and right, prepare for them. Should you, because if they don't match that criteria, then you know, holy fuck, I need to probably revert back or try something new again. Cause it's sure. very and that's, that's where like your KPIs come in strong, man. Learning your marketing, right? Biggest, believe it or not, cold calling has its own KPIs, right? How many yeah. dials to connect to correct leads to wrong numbers? Like you want to know if you have a good list or not? In call tools or texting, you should have a tag that says, correct number, not interested. Okay. So then what you do, it's real simple. You take those correct numbers, those tags, to how many people you called that day. So let's say you did a 1,000 dials, but you talked to 100 people, right? 100 people answered. Out of those 100 people, 10 people, or let's say 20 people were correct numbers, not interested. So you know 20% of the people you're talking to are correct. So you have good data. That's quality. Mm -hmm. Numbers yeah. you have is getting you connected to the right person. Holy shit, that number is low, dude. That data you have is useless. You're not connecting to the owners. Like, why are you even calling it? Right? It's important. You have to know that, or else imagine doing that, man. Imagine doing that, Brandon. You spend two months marketing to a bad list that never you wouldn't know that until probably two months later, right? Why am I not generating? Ah, yeah, yeah. You're dealing well. with crap to start off with. So how can you turn it into gold? That's it. So that's so man, it's important. 
Okay. So that's the KPIs. Those are the four KPIs that really set you up for success that you should know about. What kind of software, like what kind of technology should people start off with to really set them up for success? And I know there's tons of different ones out there. There's a million competitors for each one. Yep. But what have you guys seen that has really changed the game for you? Man, Salesforce. Salesforce has been our number. It's our CRM, our number one game changer. I give a big fat warning though to anybody listening. Salesforce is another beast. This is not easy out the box things. Like you have to know what the program can do to use it to its fucking full potential, right? I'm a big tech guy. I love tech. That's one of the reasons probably why I've been good at this is because I've learned all my systems, right? I've learned them quickly. Salesforce man has been hands down the best program you can get if you have the money, if you have the time, right? Either you have the money, you can pay someone to do all this for you. You have the time and you can learn it. And then you will still probably have to pay someone because development's in this. But man, it makes your process. It's how we track our KPIs. Like all those fancy dashboards we always have come from Salesforce, right? At this point, I almost have them automated. Like I can go track last 90 days, texting, cold calling, or right, last 90 days, just everything. How did everything perform? Yeah. Down to the right. I just pull up dashboards now. I'm like, okay, numbers look good. Cool. I don't have to go dig in, right? But that took us, man, months and months of right structuring. One of the biggest mistakes I had was thinking CRMs was a fix it all, right? Yeah. Have all your problems fixed. What they don't tell you about CRMs is that you have to build out your process, man. What does it mean to do what in your business? Sure. Once you figure that you have to make that, you enjoy a CRM because now you're not fighting with what's already there. If that makes sense. Like you have to build it to you, right? What I might consider an appointment will probably be different from what another wholesaler considers an appointment, right? That's what, well, that's what I say. KPIs are important, but make sure you know how to define them inside your business. This actually, I was talking to uh, right here in Chicago, last time we went, one of our wholesalers in the right, he was talking about KPIs. I'm like, dude, I, I love that you know KPIs. It was like the biggest thing I can tell you about KPIs. Just know what they mean to you. I can sit here and tell you, right? Leads, appointments, offers, contracts, cool. But what is that to you and your business? What activates? What is a lead considered? Yeah. An appointment considered? What's an offer made considered, right? Sure. Is an offer literally just me giving you a verbal number or am I sending you a contract? And that counts as my offer, right? That's how it works for us. It's not an offer. It's not a verbal. It's I'm actually sending you a purchase agreement, right? Yep. That's what we consider an offer. So learn what that is in your business. And then your KPIs start to make sense because then they actually tell you the story. Yeah, the story. Right. Other than that, you don't know what you're tracking. <clears throat> you don't know what they mean and it's going to be useless. So figure That's out good. into your business. So Salesforce for the CRM, it's not for the average. It's for somebody that like you need to have some time, energy to put into it to really master it or the finances to be able to pay somebody to catch you up to speed, basically. Otherwise, what other tools have been super helpful? Man, I've been... Launch Control for texting has been yep. great. I love Launch Control. It's what has produced us 15x, right? I think when we made... 15x, I think we spent nine grand and we have made 168 that quarter. Yeah, come on. Come on, guys. Let's go. I, I like love that. it. I like that return. Right? Yeah, nine yeah. Grand. Not bad. Like, not bad. So launch control is great. Call tools. Yeah. Fantastic cold calling program. Learn it. No shit. I have rebuilt. I'm telling you, don't be afraid to rebuild your system, guys. I have rebuilt my things multiple, multiple. I can't tell you how many times I've had to go in and redesign completely, right? Start from scratch because sure. I have new ideas and a new process and take it. So call tools is great if you learn what it does. Salesforce is amazing. Man, I love using Teams. Microsoft, if you have a company, Microsoft Teams, I would just say the Microsoft suite in general for business is fantastic, man. It's like nine bucks a person. You have your meetings, you have room chats, you have like cloud storage, you get all the Microsoft programs, right? And more, dude, they fucking no shit offer. They're not, they're not just Word anymore, right? They have like planners, calendars. You pay 12 bucks, dude, and they provide you a lot of different apps. I love it. That's how we run our business is on Teams, right? We all get to. I love it. Rack. So that's been a game changer for us, for sure. Yeah. Cool. So talk to me about... 
uh, any learning curves along the way? I'm sure there's a bunch of them, but you know, what sticks out the most to you guys that you think the listeners could really learn from or, or something that like, Hey, you know, it smacked you so hard across the face that you're like, I'll never make that mistake again. <laughs> Dude, fuck. <laughs> there's a lot. I guess the biggest ones, man, learn who you're partnering with. How about that? Yeah. Learn who when people say vet I've people in there. <laughs> there are no shit. If you want to start with a partnership with people, dude, find out their intentions. Who are they? What is do your visions align, right? Like, does your vision no shit align with this person? If sure. so, you might be able to work together. If not, guys might not be a good fit, right? I have completely different vision than what my old partner did. And right, that's why we couldn't work to the spend time, man. And if you are in that situation already, fuck and take the leap. Just have that tough call. It's yeah. much better to end it now than go in fucking. Oh here. yeah. Dragging it out, dragging your feet through the pain. Right. Yeah, so, so do, do, do it now. If you do have it, you're in a situation, just do it, get it over with and fucking move forward. One thing's one, man. I can tell you this, no matter what part you're on the business, one thing you cannot lose is the knowledge you get. Yep. It's the only thing you ever need to get back where you're at. So my, my two cents uh, to add on top of that, because that is great. Like partnerships, it's so, so crucial. Have contracts in place, especially when you sit down with an official lawyer to go over partnerships. They're going to bring up all the worst case scenarios, like the doom gloom type of scenarios. And you guys might both look at each other like, oh, that's never going to happen. Let's just move on to the next one. And those are all set up for the worst case scenario, right? So yep. let's have those tough conversations. And you'll also learn from each other off of those conversations right from the start of like, yep. dang, I didn't even think of that. Like what would happen or how do you want it to, you know, if we did turn into this situation, like how do we end it? What What is makes sense, right? So sitting down, having that tough conversation in the beginning with a lawyer, a third party person that can really bring you guys together and have it written up in contract will set you up for more success instead of just taking the good old handshake or whatever. And then yeah. intentions come out differently in the future. You find out, you know, I was burned on 160,000 years ago in a real estate transaction, just a, a real estate deal that I learned from that. And is because yeah. of the lack of contracts that we didn't have, you know? So yeah, I think that's, it's crucial. That's like my right bib. If I really had to, like, dude, just learn, right? And because that skill man goes a long way. Yeah. Learn how to tough conversations, dude. Guess what? You learn how to run a better business. Yeah. Running a business isn't easy, man. Guess what? There always is fucking tough conversation. Yeah. Like, knowing how to, dude, talk to people, hold people accountable, like expectations, right? I expect yep. this. Do you, are you, right? Do you know I'm not? I don't think we're going to be a good fit. Why? Because we're probably going to bump heads, but I'm going to come ask you about it. And the results aren't there, right? It doesn't yep. work. Like, Culture is huge too, man. Know your culture. One of the biggest things my mentor used to tell me as well was, what are your core values? What are your core values? And I was like, at the time, man, I was so new. I was like, he kept asking me, like trying to instill this. And I was like, I don't, I, I would try to make core values. That comes into play, man. I promise you guys, like you guys will know six months in, a year in, like how you want your culture to yeah. Right. You, you'll you'll know what you're not on the fence with. You'll know yes. what you are not okay with. Once you write down that list of what you're definitely not okay with, you're gonna know in your heart, like, hey, this is how I want to move better. Right, right. And it just that comes within time, man. Like experiment. Fuck, and I love to say I like to fail fast so I can learn quicker what not to do. Like that yeah. was a motto. Like, dude, starting this business, I would I would aim to fail almost purposely, right? So I'm like, okay. I didn't work. Cool. X that out. Let's do the next one. X yep. that out until what do you know? Sometimes you do some shit and fuck. Like, dude, rockets send off, right? I will tell you, December, we thought we were struggling, right? We put Frank as an acquisition. He starts calling there's something fucking dialed dude, from December to January. I don't know what we pushed. Yeah. What happened, right? January was like, dude, we just cleared six figures. What? Yeah, we cleared six figures and we're set up to keep doing. We're like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. What did we just do? We're like, wait, what? What do you mean? We're like, right, take a step back. And just, damn. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. Fuck. Let's go. Hey, let's, yeah, let's go. Let's fucking hold you on. Know, 
I 100% relate with that when it comes down to I rather fail sooner than later because it's inevitable. So let's just get it over with and keep learning from it and get to going. You know, when I first got started in real estate, it took me two years. I didn't know about mentors. I didn't know about like people would give a damn to share their knowledge and expertise. So I was just soaking up as many books, podcasts, and YouTube I could. And and it helped, but you know, education's only going to go so far. You need to implement it, right? And yeah. you need to have somebody over your shoulder that's been there and done that that can stop you and say, "Whoa, bro. Like, you don't want to make that stupid mistake. Yeah. Do this." And yeah, so long story short, I got to the point of desperateness that I was just like, "Dude, I am I don't care. 2 years has passed." all these offers aren't getting accepted. I'm cool with just like, let's buy anything at this point. And even if I get screwed over, like, yeah, it's okay. Right. I want to learn now. I want to touch something. Let's go. So I know a lot of him. I know a lot of people might be listening to this and can feel the same way. What you should know now, I think is invest in yourself, like learn about this. If you don't have the funds to do so, like learn credit right? Like learn credit so that you can get credit funds to be able to leverage into yourself and into other assets, other opportunities, diversify into these investments and take action on it. These new skills that Chris is like throwing down for you right here, it's it's like unmatched, right? Like once you get the play by play, you'll know how to make serious wealth like these guys. Like you guys hit your first six figure month and then you notice you're looking back at everything like, holy cow, like how do we do that? And then you also see the KPIs that tell yeah. the story showing, hey, we're projected to do this the next month. And you know what? The next month after that, yeah. like, holy cow, like how? Line up. Like, you're like, yeah. Shit, it makes sense, man. But there's one, one thing I just want to always focus on, Brandon, on top of everything. None of this ever matters. You do not take action. Yeah. I just want to keep that right. Whoever is listening, none of this fucking matters. Nobody still, right? None of the big guys do billionaires would ever have done what they did if they didn't take that action. If you're listening, be let this be your sign. Yeah. Do something, man. L- literally a simple Google search to get you down that rabbit hole yep. is the first thing you need. You don't need money, right? Just take action. Take massive, massive fucking action. I promise you, massive action, man, gets you massive fucking results. That's yeah. Hands down, dude. Right? That's biggest, so good. Biggest thing I do is just... Here's what I found. Someone, yeah. my mentor would tell me, hey, go fix this. Okay, cool. Hey, I fixed that. Why is this? Okay, do this. Okay, cool. I did that. I do yep. this. We have plans. Dude, they're not just dreams or plans where right? I take them and make it wrong with it. And you don't have to do it. You can hire people. That's fine. Just make shit happen, man. Take action to whatever you guys are trying to do. And I promise you, it pays off in yeah. knowledge, money, right? It pays off in what yeah. way. That's so good. I, I can't agree more with that. That is so good. Selfish plug here, action driven. For the first five people that reach out and DM me on social media, show me that you left a review for Ready, Set, Go Real Estate Investing Podcast. And I will give you the book absolutely free uh, talking about how to become action driven and really like take action and break off the routines that you might be used to that is holding you back from taking action. So I really do hope that helps. Otherwise, you guys can find it on Amazon. But Chris, talk to me, man. Like, what does the future have in hold for you guys? Like, where are you guys going? What do you think the market's going to be like? Absolutely. So, market, right? Talking with everybody else, dude, we used to be able to offer 76, the way we used to comp was 76% ARV minus repairs. That's how we used to come up with our price and wholesaling, right? For 20K dispo fee. Yep. Down to about like 70% now. If you guys haven't adjusted, make that adjustment. Bring down yep. your A for B, right? The market, it's slow. It's not slow, man. You just, you have to adjust, right? People aren't buying as high as they are. Cool. Another thing that I just came to light, it's a little project we're working on, man. I know our mentor, Kent, loves to say reverse wholesaling. Well, I learned how to implement that in our business in a completely different way. Uh, I'll let you, whoever's listening here, I hope it opens up, up a different door. We're a wholesaling company, right? We do real estate. We're not really a real estate company. I'm a marketing company. Right? Yeah. Being honest, I do marketing. I'm already spending all this money on marketing. I already have all this data, all these leads in my base. Why am I only selling contracts? I only get 10 of those a month. You know how many leads I get a month? You know how many opportunities I get a month? Yeah. They're like fucking 100, right? So reverse wholesaling, I'm starting to bring in investors that are looking to buy volume 
and saying, hey, Mr. Investor, look at my database right here. These are all the people that we're currently negotiating with, not just lead, right? Like, dude, you give them the offer, they're probably more, more than likely to sign. Tell me which one of these you like, and I'll go lock it up for you on my dime, like right on my team. Ah, dude, I'm starting to cater to investors. We're not just wholesaling no more, right? Let me cater. What do you want to buy? I have a system, right? Why we love systems. Yep. Man, you tell me you want to buy in X city with <clears throat> X square feet, with this rent rate, with this, right? You, t I get down to specifics. Okay, cool. Guess what comes out? A very specific list catered to you. I love it. Change your market, right? Learn what was working, man. Might not keep working, right? I have to adapt. I have to, like, I hope wholesaling is still always going to be there, right? Because that's still what we do. But if I can add on this business inside my business to generate more revenue, like, Ron, you're already wasting the money. It's already there. The resources, why it's dumb not to do it. Like, yep. you're already in there. Just you add on one more extra piece, dude. We look at it. If I can bring on five investors buying two properties a month at 10K a pop, dude, that's 100K. Yeah. Guaranteed a month because you're not hoping to sell these. They're already sold before you ever lock them up. That's easy money. You yeah, that's good. You're learning how to go nationwide. Implement that same strategy yeah. instead of marketing to sellers, you market to cash buyers, right? Build up your cash buyers list. Same program, right? I'm a marketing company. I'll come into your market and I'll market all these leads and you'll be my buyer. So you already have guaranteed buyers, guaranteed knowledge of the area. So you don't have to know if it's a good deal or not because you have your investors telling you, it was like, right? That's our future, man. Where I see if we want to grow. In five years, man, I see us doing a million dollars a month wholesale. Yeah, let's I, go. That's gonna be the that's gonna be the idea that gets me to a million bucks a month wholesaling because I'm going to learn how to fucking no shit reverse wholesale. Where yeah, I'm okay making ten grand, five grand if I'm doing fifty deals a month. Oh, yeah, gosh. right. I mean, Holy at the end of the day, just like you said, it's like you already have it. You already paid for the data. It's already right there. It takes yep. not much more energy and time that you can delegate. You can make that a whole new position to get somebody yeah. to focus on that and part-time probably and be able to make a ton more for the company and the business. So, and I'm sure there's more opportunities in that as well that just hasn't like, you know, that is probably already coming to your head, but like, you know, in the future, you're going to unlock as well once you make this one successful. So kudos to you, brother, like really excited for all the prosperity and growth that you've had already being so like brand new at it, but at the same time, your action, right? Like your action speaks volume. That's yeah. why you're getting the success that you are. It's simply because you're taking action. You're investing back into your technology, your business, your software, and yourself to be able to take yourself and your business to the next level. So kudos to you and all this success, brother. I wish you nothing but the best. How can people get a hold of you? Oh uh, man, you can find me on Facebook, Christopher Perez, or you can see what my Instagram is. For, I think it's Christopher.Vetted. Cool. Okay. Awesome. And um, it's all going to be in the show notes for you guys as well. So definitely reach out to Chris. I mean, a wealth Dude, of knowledge, like a, a ridiculous amounts, please. I'm a, if you know me and you can, I can probably go ask anybody that knows me. You have a question? Dude, I'm an open book. Yes. Uh, what how what excites me more is when someone listens what I tell them to do and they come back and they're like, dude, that fucking it that, worked. I, it it worked. worked. I got this check. Not, like, come dude, on, right? baby. That's it. I'm like, dude, and I don't do this to half the time. Guess what? I use Loom. If you ask me a question, dude, chances are that I might have already had it fucking recorded months ago. And it's yeah. About finding like, okay, here's a Loom video. Like yeah. what I did to solve it. Oh. I don't know, dude. Right value that I never knew I had. I already trained with Loons and like with my team. Yep. You people are reaching out for help. I'm like, oh, wait, I already yeah. have that. I don't have to do anything, but I'm like, all right, cool. Here. Come on. And I get good feedback from it. So I was like, dude, I fuck it. If that's how I can help people, man, like I'm more than happy to. I love it. I love where your heart's at, bro. And that's that's why you're succeeding too. You got a giving heart, which is awesome. Dude, I appreciate you so much. It's a sin that we didn't have Frank with us today, but we'll get him on the next one. <laughs> we'll get sure. him on the next time, bro. Yeah. We we got to have you guys back with the update, you know, when you guys roll out the next portion of the business and you guys are crushing it. So 
I appreciate you greatly for your time today. Guys, if you want to get a hold of me, you can always do so on Instagram. It's Brandon Elliott Investments, otherwise, facebook.com forward slash Brandon Elliott Investor. If you're looking for any done for you services for credit repair, then it would be www.creditrepairmobile.com. Otherwise, if you're really looking to get educated on how the banks and lenders are judging you, how to be able to fix credit faster than anyone in the industry, I'm talking bankruptcies, collections, over 100K worth of debt, hard inquiries, you name it, within a couple hours to 10 business days and so forth. And also be able to build up Get to the 800 Club for the first time, build up several six figures in funding on the personal and business side, even get up to seven figures in funding within 12 months. And then once you have all these credit lines, actually put it to work, like leverage it and purchase properties, purchase assets, set up an e com store, a Turo business, life insurance policy. Like take this credit, just like the banks have been doing to us, all of our money, giving us nothing back. Get the same exact thing, flip the script on the banks, get 0% interest credit and put it to work and diversify into safe assets, then check out www.creditcouncilelite.com. That's creditcouncilelite.com. You'll be able to learn more info, watch our live webinar, and be able to set up a one-on-one call with me. So love you guys all so much. Make sure you do me that solid favor for yourself as well to hit that subscribe button for Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast. You'll get the newest episode notification every single Monday. And after listening to a couple episodes, leave that five-star review. Greatly appreciate all the love, support. As always, share this out. Tag somebody in it that needs to see it. And we will catch you on the next episode. Chris, once again, bro, you're amazing. We will stay in touch and I'll see you soon. God bless. All right. Appreciate it, brother. You guys take care, man. Peace. This has been another episode of Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast. Brought to you by Brandon Elliott. For more information, please visit BrandonElliottInvestments.com. Also, please don't forget to like, share, and leave a comment below. Thanks again for joining. Until next time, God bless.